It's interview season and there's plenty of content going around and I thought I would add my two cents to the foray of interview videos by talking about my interview experiences. And yes, experiences is plural. I obviously did my interviews to get in, but I applied the year before and I had in-person interviews as well as these online interviews. So I'm gonna talk about them both. But if you've never seen my face before, hello, I'm Sam. I do classics at Trinity and I applied to Trinity this year, but the year before I applied for classics at Brazenose. Let's start by talking about my online Trinity interviews, the interviews that actually happened a year ago today as I'm recording this. So this is what I remember at the start of the day. I was super happy that my interviews were online personally. I could just in my head avoid the PTSD of going back to Oxford because normally what happened in previous years as did with my first set, you go up and you spend four days, which is quite intense, especially if you don't get in. <laughs> so I didn't want to go and relive all those experiences again with no guarantees of getting a place. I was really prepared to go into my interviews looking really messy, to really test the idea that they don't care what you look like, they just care about what you say. In the end I went in a nice shirt, had a haircut and everything, but I do kind of think it would have been fun to see what it would have been like. But they say it's like a mock tutorial and people I see going into their tutorials in Trinity College Oxford in all sorts of clothes messy clothes, just come out of bed, whatever. And to be fair, I've heard of one person, one student, who has had an email basically be like, you need to dress smarter for your tutorials. But the rest, people get away with anything. But there we go, so I'd gone in looking nice. Or for my standards anyway, you can see my hair. I had two interviews, which both had two tutors, so I had four tutors in total. And even though I've actually got in, I've actually only seen one of the four tutors there. Reason being, we had one philosophy tutor anyway, even though I'm doing classics. That's very standard and you don't really see the philosopher because they probably hang out with the philosophers. But you would still expect to see three. But actually, both interviewers who did my second interview, the first one, she's actually moved on from Trinity, so she's not even around anymore. And the second one took a sabbatical this term, so we didn't see him either, but he is going to come back. But anyway, my first interview was with this guy who I do now see, and the philosopher. Even though they tell you there were no such things as right and wrong answers in interviews, this guy, the guy that I see, he was asking the questions with right and wrong answers. And to be honest, I was getting most of them wrong. He was asking me to date people, like when different historical figures were, where they related to one another, basically make a timeline. And I got so much of it wrong. And it's not one of those where he can be like, oh, not quite, and then move you towards the right answer. If you just get it wrong, he was like, no, that's wrong. And that was kind of it. So I walked out of that first half of the interview feeling quite bad because I just thought these things I maybe should know. I've talked about these people in my personal statement and I couldn't quite place them in reference to each other, which was quite bad. But it's funny going into Oxford now and speaking to everyone else who had to do this for the people they talked about, everyone felt very similar. And some people got their dates wrong by much more than I did. Some guy was telling me somehow he got it a thousand years out, which I don't really understand. The classical world isn't even that long, so I don't know how he managed that. And we also had this weird source where it was kind of a myth, kind of a, a sort of story or a fairy tale. And we had to work out how much of it we could take to be true and how much of it we thought was a story and all that kind of stuff. The, the argument I was trying to do in my interview was we can't know anything. And this guy, again, he was not liking my answers at all. He kept on saying to me, well, we've got to take something out of it, otherwise, why are we looking at it at all? You know, if we can assume nothing about it, what's the point of even talking about it? Which is quite fair. Um, and again, since we've gone up, this is kind of a classic question in history. How much can you sort of take it actually as, that actually is what happened and how much you have to think about these things? And there is no right answer. So again, I think in my head, it went way worse than it actually did go because I didn't quite get a good answer maybe, but at the same time, there wasn't a good answer to get. He would always find problems with that position that you take. So that was the first half of that interview. And then the second half, the philosopher asked us the following question. Let me read it out. What do you have to change about the definition of food is tasty only if it gives you pleasure in order for that statement to be right? But again, this was one where for the first minute or two, I was just going around in circles. At some point, I just had to stop him. Just be like, sorry, can you repeat it again? And I wrote it down. And then I think I'd composed myself and started to get closer to kind of what he was looking for. But I walked out of that interview thinking it went fine. It went very weird. And I remember feeling the same about my first interview from the year before, which we'll talk about soon. But my second interview was so different. We went through my personal statement a bit at the start, which is nice. Everyone enjoys that because you should know your statement quite well. And actually the interviewer asked me which part of my statement I wanted to talk about. So it wasn't as if she even chose a random bit. I had complete full reign, which is brilliant because I could choose the bit I was most confident at. And the bit I chose was my first paragraph, 
and you can see what's in my personal statement. I'll link the video one of these sides, I don't know which one it is. So that felt much better and I'm glad I finished it that way around, which was the first one kind of went meh and the second one went better because you feel like you've ended it on a bit of a high. But if it's the other way around for you and your first one was good and your second one was meh, or even if they were both alright and none of them were that good, don't worry, just move on and you know it's done. And it did feel very anticlimactic once it was done because you kind of log off from this meeting and then that's kind of it. You've kind of done your whole process and you're just sitting at home and that's kind of a bit weird. But I opened the door and I saw my parents both there and they'd obviously been listening in to my interviews. You know, the, the kind of icebreaker questions they were saying at the start, you know, how are you? How are you feeling? Apparently I just went into loads of detail about how like, I'm so glad this is almost over. This is my last interview, which is probably not what the interviewers want to hear. But I don't think they were marking at this stage. I think they probably laughed off, didn't care. And they're like, Sam, why did you say that? And they remembered. I just completely forgot. As soon as my interview was done, just repressed it all. And obviously they must have gone fine enough for me to get a place in the end. My first set of interviews in Brazenose in 2019 was very different. You have to go up, you stay there for four days, even though you literally have just the same two interviews, probably on the same day. You have to stay all the other days anyway. It's very highly pressured, also socially, because you have to meet other people from your course. I was not happy when I was going up. I was so anxious, so nervous. I didn't really like the social aspect of it either having to speak to people at meals or sort of meet people going into the dining room. I just thought that added a whole new dimension to the stress, which was only gonna complicate things. So my parents drove me up. We're from London, so it's not that far away. And they had food with me once we arrived, which was so nice because it helped me calm me down a bit. And then we went into Brazenose and I went for dinner in Brazenose dining hall. And I met a few people, but one person who I really liked who was one of the people interviewing for ENM, economics and management. And for the next four days, I mostly hung out with the people doing ENM, which worked very well for me because even though they're hanging out all with each other, which I thought was a bit weird because there must be a weird dynamic of you're all competing for the same spaces. It's not as if you're all a cohort yet. There are only a certain amount of spaces for you guys. I literally met no classicists from Brazenose. So I could just feel it was my journey. I didn't have to make friends, fake friends. Can you even be friends with them at that time? You know, it's just all a bit weird. And I could avoid all of that by hanging out with people who were doing a completely separate course. Brazenose is actually a very nice college to hang out with for a few days. Their JCR is amazing. They've got pool, they've got snooker, they've got amazing sofas. The Brazenose room I was in, it was actually a really nice room. Uh, it must have been one of the older years because you came in and you had like a living space and separate there was another door and it goes into the bedroom. So it felt like there was two rooms in one. And I remember that room very well. The floor was actually very slanty, but we had a nice desk. You had a nice chair. There was a low kind of table where I did some of my reading. It looked onto the main quad of Brazenose, which was very nice. Although the window was super high up and then there was this little tiny bedroom. But I spent four days in that room and yeah, it was a really nice room. Let's go back to the diary uh, to, to see what I remembered at the time from my Brazenose interviews. And my first day was actually two years ago tomorrow. So very weird. It's really this time of year. It's very weird to be reading these things back. Okay, yeah, I do remember this actually. So it is very weird when you get taken into the actual interview room. I was in my full suit at the time with my school tie, my school blazer or, you know, suit that I had to wear for school. And you're sitting as one of the sort of helpers takes you up. You're sitting outside this room worried because the people are in there. Maybe they're conferring about the last person. Then you have to go in and it is very different to just doing it online. The space feels intimidating because you have maybe it's someone's office. They've got all their books around. There are two academics there with, you know, pens and papers. You come sort of humbly sit opposite them. It's a very weird thing. And once you actually go up for tutorials, if you get in, it's really not that intimidating. Like I've talked about, people go in in their pajamas, basically, in some cases, literally. And you're kind of, you kind of know the tutors by then. And you definitely don't feel intimidated by them because you know this is your place now. But the first thing they asked me was, how easy is it to understand the classical world today, even though it happened so long ago? So we can already kind of see from two sets of interviews the kind of thing they're often asking about. It kind of relates back to the source I had in the first one where he's saying, this is a myth, how much can we understand? They really want to test your sensitivity to sources and works because if you're gonna be reading and understanding a lot of these texts, you've got to get it right. You can't take too much from them, you can't take too little. And the first thing I said was, I think it's easier to understand the classical world today than it would have been a thousand years ago, even though a thousand years ago it was obviously closer. And I thought this was a nice point. I wasn't really going anywhere with it. 
but they stopped me and they said okay brilliant let's talk about a thousand years ago so now i had to talk about the relationship between the classical world and sort of the middle ages which i had done absolutely nothing of before i had no idea of my times again i didn't know when the printing press was invented i didn't know when this was invented and i don't really know how my interviews went but i didn't feel that bit went that well because again i just thought i was kind of saying nothing of use and i wasn't really talking about the right things I was basically talking about something I had no idea about. Maybe that was the point. But you always feel like, I'm not sure I said anything good there. And then at the end, they asked me about my personal statement, the other interviewer. And I remember this interviewer, and I'm sure this wasn't the case, was reading my personal statement for the first time, chose something on the first line to ask about, literally the first line of my personal statement, like a clarification, which I had explained. But I'd literally explained it myself in about line four of my personal statement. But the other way to think about this is maybe they just wanted to give me a nice question to finish it off because the interview hadn't gone that well and they wanted to give me a bit of confidence that at least I could answer one thing. It was about the inspiration of Dido for the character of Medea and how the character of Medea was formed, if that means anything to you classicists. But then I went back and I had lunch and then we came for our second interview. On the exact same day, it already felt quite stressed and in my head I'd already thought the first interview didn't go that well. I didn't feel I could differentiate myself that much. But the second interview went much better. We were taken into a room beforehand to prep this English poem. We could notate it, we could write it, we could whatever. Just like the source I had the year after, except they just sent you an email and you could print it off and look through it 15 minutes before. This time you're actually in a room in exam conditions. But I felt quite confident with this, especially with the fact that the 15 minutes in my head gave me some time to calm down, chill out, and get some points that I thought I was gonna say. So I come to the second interview and I knew who the interviewers were. One of them was a classicist professor who I had met before when I'd come up to Brazenose. The person taking me around Brazenose at the time was a classicist. So they said, oh, you know, we can probably just knock on my professor's door. He'll probably be happy to speak to a potential classicist. So I spoke to this guy and I don't know if he remembered me at the time. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but I recognized him. And actually this interview, this English part of the interview about the poem went very well. Of course, what's interesting is I was rejected by him and all the other interviewers, but he does one of my lectures now, like he runs it. So it's very weird because of course I'm not a brazenose, but I feel I see this guy all the time because I see him at least once a week and he's lecturing to a hundred people and he wouldn't recognize me anyway. But I find it weird that I knew this guy from interviews, then he rejected me. And then a year later, I'm sort of being taught by him again in some weird way. But then I came onto the second half of the interview with the brazenose philosopher tutor. And he asked me some things about how do we know if we're doing right and wrong? And I thought that went well as well. To be honest, I was so happy with how the second interview had come. In my head, I thought I'd literally done as well as possible. That interview went amazingly. I've definitely got a place, which of course, in the end, I didn't get a place that year. And actually when the interviews came around the second time and I felt much less confident, I did get my place. So however confident you're feeling, it does not correlate necessarily with whether you're gonna get a place or not. And also remember, this is just one part of the process. People like to big it up because it's the last part. It feels the most high pressured maybe because you're on the spot. You're meeting real Oxford people. But my personal opinion is the admissions test, if you have one, is much, much more important. So this is objective measure that the department or the college can use to compare you. And even if not, the interview literally is just one part that maybe is not less important than the admissions test, but is just as important. So if this wasn't your best part of the process, don't worry because even though it's the last one and it's the one you want to end on a high, it's not necessarily by any means the most important. And you can definitely still get a place with average performances or you don't feel they went that well, the interviews. Okay, so onto my story, which started in Brazenose and I think has a really nice ending, which happens over two years. One of the people I met in Brazenose was one of these people doing e and and he spoke to me after his interviews and he said to me, Sam, I know I've definitely not got in. There's not a chance. My interview went so bad. It's economics questions, so they're right and wrong. And he just got none of it right. He literally couldn't attempt any of it. And I thought, oh, that really sucks for this guy because he seemed really nice and I wanted him to get in because he's done not doing my subject. I completely wanted him to get in. And when it comes to Oxford Offers Day in what, February time? And I texted him saying, mate, I didn't get my place. And he said, mate, I didn't get my place. So we both were kind of maybe happy that we had at least one other person we could talk about how much we hate Brazenose and how it's so unfair because neither of us got our places. I said to him, I was maybe considering reapplying, especially after COVID had hit. And he said to me, I'm really not considering reapplying. So that was kind of sad because, you know, we thought maybe we could be at the same Oxford college together and not, none of us got in. And so we we're gonna go our separate ways, but he was a nice guy to hang out with for four days. In the end, you guys will know that I reapplied. So once I came to getting in and all the group chats are popping off, 
they said follow this Instagram freshers page where it's very common for lots of unis isn't it people can post their name and their face and their caption and saying hi I'm whoever you know I'm going to this college and maybe you can see where this is going because on this page lo and behold who do I find this guy who'd been rejected a year ago and now I realise we're both going to go to Oxford together. Turns out him and his mate were kind of running this page or they'd set it up somehow. So he sees that I'm following the page and Instagram DMs me. We carry on speaking. And it's the funniest thing because we haven't spoken to each other for literally almost a year, probably to the day, because we spoke last year when the offers came out. And then we didn't really speak after a week or so after that maybe. And now we're speaking again and we're both going in. Okay, pretty weird, huh? Two people apply for one college, get rejected and then reapply. We're not at the same college this time, by the way. But then he texts me saying, I found a third person who also was at Brazenose with us, applying, and now has got rejected by Brazenose and has got in this year. But apparently this was this guy's third application. Brazenose was already his reapplication and he'd gotten it on the third time. The person I was friends with at the time and we spoke, We've obviously met up in Oxford now as we're both there and we think it's great fun meeting up, walking past Brazenose and thinking, you know, last time we had met each other, we were in Brazenose having not got in and a year and at that time of results, it looked so unlikely that we would ever see each other again or both be at Oxford and now we're both here, which we find very funny. And apparently there's this third guy as well who was on his third application. So fair play to that guy because he must have worked really hard to get in. I reapplied and that was still quite stressful. But imagine getting rejected in your reapplication and then applying for a third time. But there we go, I thought that was so funny that the people I really liked at Brazenose and thought I would never see again, we're all in the same year at Oxford. But actually none of us at Brazenose and none of us in the original year we applied. But there we go, those are my interview stories and a little funny story at the end. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy and I'll see you in the next video.